cloud. So welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for this workshop. I hope that you've had a good day of workshops. I started at nine o'clock with a big group this morning, and this is a great way to finish the second day of our Teach for LA Regional Collaborative Workshop. Uh, my name is Dr. Veronica Allen. I am an instructor. I teach at LA Mission College, and Mission is one of the community colleges in the Southern um, California region that were part of the Teach Collaborative, and um, we prepare students to enter the workforce and to transfer to earn degrees to become teachers, different kinds of students from infants into um, elementary school teaching. So welcome again. This workshop topic is the pathway from community college to CSUN. Now we're going to focus on the um, Mission College certificates and degrees, but I saw we have some um, attendees from local Southern California community colleges. So as you listen to the information about certificates and degree options, you can go back and check what are those options at your campus. And then if you are within the LACCD, um, a student at Mission Valley, Pierce City, you can also see how are these certificates and degrees similar to what you have as an option at your particular campus within LACCD. And then after I share my information, after this welcome, I'm going to hand the virtual floor over to my colleagues and partners at CSUN um, to share information about their departments and programs. So if you're just joining us, please type your name in the chat box. If you want to send me a direct message um, it's with your email so that we can send you information as a follow up, you can do that. So I mentioned that Mission College is part of the Los Angeles Regional Teach Collaborative. This is a group of community colleges that have met and, and consulted over the years and shared best practices and especially worked together to offer workshops um, to help students on their path to becoming teachers. I'm just gonna ask everyone. Yeah. Would you ever make me delete an Instagram post? So I'm, I'm, um, I'm just gonna ask everyone to mute themselves so that... We're not confusing credentials with. Yeah, okay. Somebody forgot to mute themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So we're just. A okay. young voice. Because like, the, the person that's leading it is talking Krista, about like, people I'm that are going to be presenting. Well, Krista. Okay. I'm just going around making sure that we don't get any backup. Um, I just have a question. Do you mind turning on the closed captions? Sure, just a second. Thank you. Okay, that sh it, it's on. So let's see. I just turned that on. So hopefully that you're able to see that. Okay. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and continue. Um, Mission College is one of the campuses as part of this Teach Regional Collaborative, and we're really happy to participate in this. Um, so for today's co-presenters, the focus will be on that transfer pathway, especially California State University Liberal Studies Department. And we have Mr. Jonathan Martinez. He's our partner in helping inform students how to transfer into CSUN's Liberal Studies um, a major and becoming a credentialed teacher. And um, we also have from the College of Education, Ms. Jacqueline Keitzman, and she helps advise students on the uh, programs in the credentialing options, multiple subject, and then also um, authorization, so special specialties, and she's able to answer questions about requirements to transfer. And then I'm an instructor at LA Mission College. I also um, uh, coordinate this grants for teacher preparation as well as 
um, and the chair of our Child and Family Studies Department. So for today's workshop, welcome everyone. Um, I already mentioned for you to type in your name and if you are from Mission or any other campus, and if you would like um, I, uh, you know, the material sent to you, I'm going to briefly go over the uh, teacher pathway options at Mission. I'm also going to briefly touch on the difference between a certificate, a permit, and a degree. So we often hear um, that there are different options and they may serve different purposes. Then we're going to explore the CSUN teacher pathways, specifically liberal studies, the credential. And then if there's any Q&A um, questions, you can put that in the chat box and we'll um, go back and make sure that those get, get answered if they're not part of the presentation. So I want to start really quickly with what is the difference? And some students are aware. And some students are not necessarily aware of what is the difference between a permit, a certificate, and a degree. Um, are they the same? How do they prepare someone? And I want, um, because I'm a faculty member that teaches both child development and education, I want to make the path very clear for students. So a child development permit is issued by the Commission on Teacher Credentialing, but you have to take coursework. You have to take classes in order to be eligible for one of those permit levels. And this child development permit matrix is what we use to advise students and inform them what are the different options to apply for a child development permit at the different levels. So there is an assistant, that's the entry level of a permit, the associate teacher, the teacher the master teacher, the site supervisor, and then the program director. These are the different levels of permits. And it's like a license to teach. It's the permiso, the permit to teach young children in a non-credentialed classroom. And so if you want to teach uh, TK or first grade, that would require, it's part of elementary instruction, it would require a credential. And so a permit is for people that would like to uh, focus on teaching young children, maybe in a preschool, an early education center, like LAUSD has many of those early ed centers, a state-funded preschool, uh, working with infants and toddlers. So, um, you know, this is one option and it doesn't mean that you can't get a permit and earn a permit and then become an elementary school teacher. Um, but a permit is something that you apply for to the Commission on Teacher Credentialing. It's the same organization that credential teachers for elementary apply for their credential. And um, you have to take courses in order to be eligible. And it could be a, a combination of courses and experience. What's a certificate? A certificate is usually um, assigned to the student. They earn a certificate and it's usually a local college, meaning the college that you went to. City, Pierce, Rio Hondo, you take a set of courses, that group of courses, and that makes you eligible for a particular certificate. Even within certificates, there are differences. There might be a skills certificate versus a certificate of achievement. At LA Mission College, we offer certificate of achievements, which means when we have a collection of classes, a group that equate one type of certificate, um, they are approved by the Department of Education in the state of California, and they are listed on your transcript along with your degrees. And we have three levels of certificates and you can earn these in combination with a transfer degree. Then we have degrees. We have transfer degrees that are typically, um, you take 60 units at a community college and then you transfer to a four-year university. And we have two types of degrees at mission. We have a degree that is called a local degree that's only 60 units. When a student graduates, they're done. It's not intended for transfer. And then we also have what's called transfer degrees, which is what you will see that might be called an ADT or an AST or an AAT. That's Associate of Arts for Transfer, Associate in Science 
for transfer. And um, we have included that in our three levels of certificates to include both a 60 unit local degree that does not transfer. That's our third column, as well as our second column, which are um, the, uh, the child development major courses for the transfer degree. Now these certificates are in child development, but at Mission we offer elementary education as well. We offer a transfer degree. It's meant to transfer to help step into the liberal studies major. So again, a point of clarification, if you want to work primarily with young children, maybe five years old and younger in a non-elementary classroom setting, then your teacher pathway is going to be either an associate of arts and child development or for example, the transfer degree in early childhood education, the AST, that does transfer to a four-year CSU. But if you know you want to be an elementary school teacher and you're just starting your units or you're not too far into your units and you've been taking um, general ed, then you would want to select the major that's either liberal studies or elementary education, like the degree we have at Mission, elementary education that transfers into the CSUN liberal studies major. This is just the visual that I met that I went over a minute ago, our three levels of our stackable certificate. And um, I want to point out our newest revised certificate. It's called School Age Care and Education. It's in that last column. This is approved by the state, which means that it is um, uh, noted on a student's transcript and it's 18 units. This can help prepare you with information to become a before or after school um, worker, to be a teacher's assistant, or to uh, be an aide in like a transitional kindergarten class. And it's called school age care and education because it has 18 units of a combination of child development and education courses. And all of these courses can be used either as a transfer course in our elementary education degree or as an elective as part of that um, teacher education, elementary education transfer. This is just the last thing I'll share our brochure for our education transfer degree. As I mentioned, it's 60 units and it's meant as a stepping stone for students that want to be elementary school teachers um, into our feeder CSU Northridge partner. Um, here is some contact information that I'm going to leave up while I invite one of my colleagues. Um, usually it's Ms. Jacqueline um, that, that presents after me, but I'm open to um, let um, Mr. Jonathan or Jacqueline decide who will um, take the virtual floor now and share information on your CSUN program. Thank you, Dr. Allen. I believe Jacqueline will be going next. Ladies, always go first, so Jacqueline will go next. Oh my gosh, you're such a gentleman, Jonathan. Okay, <laughs> hold on one second. I'm just getting you set up. Uh, okay, Thank you. While you're, while you're doing that, Jacqueline, I'm going to answer some questions in the chat box. Okay. Well, I'm ready whenever. I'm ready whenever. So just let okay. me know when you can answer the questions. Though. That's fine. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Oh, so I can start? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you um, so much. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Let me see. Share the screen. Everyone can see my screen? Yes? Okay. Yes. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for coming this late afternoon. It's so great that you're all here. Um, and thank you, uh, Dr. Allen, for inviting Jonathan and I. We're always happy to present um, for this, for this, at this conference. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, so well, let me just back up a little bit. Um, so I represent the College of Education at CSUN and the College of Education at CSUN, we only have one undergraduate major, which is Deaf Studies. So, you know, you don't come into our college to become a teacher right off the bat if you are to transfer to CSUN. Um, you, you typically will, will major, as Dr. Ellen said, maybe in liberal studies if you wanted to teach elementary school students or maybe even uh, special education students. Uh, but then depending on what, if you want to go into the high school, middle school, you, you would want to major in a, in a major that aligns with what you want to teach. So I'll get into that in a second. Um, 
So I'm just going to go over a few of our college highlights in the College of Education. We are the largest teacher pet program in the Cal State system. Uh, we are champions of social justice, equity, access, and inclusion. Um, our master's in education and technology ranked number one uh, by best value school. So if that's something that you might want to do, maybe get a master's degree after you get your teacher credential um, in that field that, you know, we're a great campus to do that. Um, many of our teacher alumni have been recognized as teacher of the year um, within its within uh, whether it's within the LUSD system, teacher of the year, even through our, our state, um, but our most notable uh, alumni has been Rebecca Milwaukee who was named Teacher of the Year from the whole United States. She was awarded uh, by President Obama. And uh, one of the most important things is that we are an affordable and accessible institution. Um, so just a few quick points that I wanna share about um, the important, importance of the teaching profession. Um, one, there are more than enough employment opportunities right now. And it's anticipated that there's gonna be a lot of employment opportunities for teachers in the next 10 years. Uh, California needs 100,000 new teachers in the next 10 years. So if you decide to do a credential program, you're gonna be solid with a, with a career. Um, the economic benefits, um, you know, they, they are there. I know we hear all the time that teachers don't get paid enough and I will be one of the first people to say that that is so true. Teachers should be getting paid more, especially when you look at how about how much athletes get paid and celebrities is ridiculous. Um, but teachers should definitely get paid, get be, should be getting paid more. However, even though they should be getting paid more, doesn't mean that they walk away with nothing. There's a lot of economic benefits that teachers could, um, that walk away with. Um, start, salaries start about 56,000 a year, just start. And every year as you teach and the more experience you get, your salary will go up. Furthermore, if you do decide to get a master's degree, that's another uh, pay raise that you could that you could possibly get. So it is important to kind of think about those opportunities after you get your credentials to maybe you know look at some uh, different master's degree programs. The other thing I want to mention with the economic benefits is the awesome uh, other benefits that you get, such as vacation, right? Like you get the summers off, you get winter break, you get spring break. Um, in addition to that, other benefits like retirement and health insurance, that's something that as society, we don't talk enough about to our young people when they're choosing, when they're thinking about what careers are gonna go into. It's really important to think about those things about retirement and, and health insurance and dental insurance and all of that, because that does end up costing money if you don't have a job that, that pays for, uh, that for you. So uh, teachers, they get great economic benefits. And then last but not least, making an impact. So serving as a role model and plan to practice your commitment to social justice, that is like number one. So I truly believe teachers, they are heroes, uh, they are revolutionary, they are making changes day after day um, with their students, whether you're teaching a kindergarten or whether you're a uh, kindergartner or whether you're teaching a, a high school senior ready to go to college. Um, the impact that you make to these students um, is tremendous. Um, you know, oftentimes, or not oftentimes I should say, but you know, as a teacher, you may be the only adult that the student knows that went to college. So they're, you're like their first college recruiter. Um, you might be the only person they know that's a, that's a professional. Um, so you might be the first professional they could ask these questions to. So when you go out to the field and you are teaching, praise the teaching profession. Because a lot of times, sometimes students, they don't, they had bad teachers and they think, I don't want to be a teacher. Like I had a horrible experience, but be that positive experience, be that positive influence on our, on our youth. Um, so here are the different teaching credentials that we offer at CSUN. So we have three credential programs. We have the Education Specialist Credential Program, and that's if you wanted to go into special education. And again, the programs I'm going to uh, talk about are all after you get your bachelor's degree. Jonathan's going to talk more about the programs, you know, about liberal studies, about the, the combined, but these are all programs that you apply for after you get your bachelor's degree. Um, so the education specialist, we have three options. We have the deaf, deaf and hard of hearing option, the early childhood special education option, and then this is our newest option. Like I'm talking about new right off the press this semester, um, mild, moderate support needs and extensive support needs uh, option. This last option, it's actually a combined, it's a dual credential program. So you're getting two credentials for one. Um, so that's, again, that's, that's just started. We're, we just are starting to accept applications for that this semester to start for next semester. Um, then we have the multiple subject credentials. That's if you want to teach elementary school students. And then we have single subject credential, which all of these that you could see here that are listed are what we offer, um, what, what single subject credentials uh, programs we offer. 
I do want to mention at this point something uh, very important for you to know. So I'm not going to talk too much about the multiple subject uh, uh, um, option in terms of liberal studies, because that's going to be Jonathan. But I do want to talk about the single subject credential and a shortcut, if you will. Um, so if you want to teach, uh, if you want a single subject credential, it's really important that you major in the subject that you want to teach. So for instance, if you want to teach English, you should probably major in English. Um, that really gives you the, the, the roots, the foundation to teach English. Furthermore, if you see um, on the screen anything with the asterisk, that means that at CSUN, we have a subject matter program. So what does that mean? So if you majored in English and you did a subject matter program in English, that means you don't have to take the CSET later on, which is a huge deal, okay? Um, same thing with, with music. If you wanna be a music teacher, major in music and do the subject matter program in music. And how do you do that? You know, once you apply to CSUN, you major, when you talk to your advisor, let them know you wanna be a teacher and that way they, they put you in the, in the uh, course sequence for the subject matter program, okay? Um, I'll get more into this in a little bit because there's some other options too. Um, for our teaching pathways at CSUN, so again, we have the ITEP program, that's really with the multiple subject and, and the education specialist program, but I'll let Jonathan talk about that in detail. Um, the other one I'll talk about is the freshman junior year integrated program. So all of you are currently a community college student, um, so you will look into the junior year integrated program. So what is that? That's called the JYI. Uh, basically, you could earn your bachelor's degree and your credential at the same time. Um, so you don't have to apply later on to, you know, you, you graduate, when you graduate, you get your credential at the same time. You don't have to later come in and start the credential program from day one. Um, with this program though, the junior integrated program, we only have it for three uh, subjects. We have it for uh, English, math, and history. So, you know, if you, you could do music, you could do um, art and do the subject matter program in that major. But if you wanted to do English, history, or math, it's really important. And you could do subject matter too for those. But if you wanted to do the JYI program, that's a different program within that major. So you have to ensure that you let your advisor know when you come to CSUN on day one on that first day of advisement, I'm interested in the JYI program. So you could start taking those courses. You could start, uh, you could start in that sequence, that course sequence, to be part of the JYI program. Um, so if you don't have the option to do a GYI program because we don't have that in your major, or maybe you're not majoring in liberal studies, maybe you're majoring in child development or whatever, and, you, and you're going to apply for the credential program after you get your bachelor's degree, then these are the three different pathways we have to offer you. We have the traditional credential program. That is the most basic credential program, and you pretty much go at your pace. So whether it takes two years, three years to complete, that's pretty much on you. Maybe you start the first semester part-time, so you don't know what to expect. And then maybe the second semester, you take an extra course. So you really kind of go at your own pace. Um, you could do it in three semesters, you could do it in four semesters. Again, it's up to you. You kind of design your own program. I mean, the classes are there, but you design on when you want to take them, what semesters you want to take them. Um, the other pathway we have is the internship program. So these are this program is open to any student who has been offered full-time uh, employment as a teacher, right? So maybe you're already working as a, a teacher assistant or a teacher's aide, or you've been like a, a long-term substitute at a teacher. And then the school realizes like, hey, this teacher's never coming back, or maybe a teacher's going on maternity leave, whatever it might be, and they have a position open. They might say, hey, we really, we trust you. We know that you're currently doing a, a credential program at CSUN. Could you see if you could do an internship program? And tip, what might happen is that you might be in this program and, and then this might be offered to you. Um, so it's not like one of those things of we help you find the internship, right? Like it has to be offered to you from the school itself. Um, but if you do the internship program, again, that, that means you're, you're working every day, you know, five days a week, Monday through Friday, you're, you're, you're teaching. And then that, that takes over the student teaching that you have to do because you're currently doing it. And then you're coming to see that in the, late, uh, the afternoons and evening to take your courses. The other pathway is our ACT program, the Accelerated Collaborative Teacher Education Program. And there's two different ACT programs. The ACT program, the general ACT program, it's open to anyone. Um, any type of credential program you want, it's open to you. 
And basically it, that focus is accelerated. So it's a fast paced program where in one academic year, fall and spring, you could get your credential and any of the credential options that we have, okay? But you do have to start in the fall and finish in the spring. We don't, you, you can't start mid-year. Um, it is, again, it's a full-time program. So you're gonna be doing your student teaching during the day and then in the afternoon and evenings, you're gonna to come to school in the evening. I wanna say it's anywhere between like 18 to 21 units per semester. But again, you're done in that one year. The ACT R is the residency program. And the residency we have is with LUSD. And this is specifically for any credential candidates that are interested in teaching in any of our STEM programs. So any science, single subject science or math or special education. So if you are interested in doing special education or any of the STEM um, credential programs, you could do the ACT R. Um, the thing with the ACT R is that you are eligible for a $15,000 stipend, but you are committed to working for LUSD for at least four years. Okay, so this is a partnership we have with LUSD. Um, they help fund this project. So that way, once you're done, you, you're guaranteed to work at LUSD for the first four years or a minimum for four years. Um, so what is needed from you for the teaching credential application? So uh, we need, you know, you come to CSUN as an undergraduate. We don't need to have your transcripts because we already have them. But I do want you to keep in mind that we need a 2.67 cumulative GPA. So that even counts the classes that you're currently taking now because it's a cumulative GPA from all your courses that you ever took. So um, keep, you know, keep that in mind. Um, you got to uh, meet basic skills and subject matter, which I'll go into detail in a bit. Uh, we also need early field experience, and I'll get into that in a, in a bit too, more detail. Uh, we need a fingerprint and TB clearance, um, two letters of recommendation, and a statement of objective. So again, this will all come later uh, if you decide to do the credential program after graduation. Um, so I don't want to overwhelm you with the details, but just I want this to be in the back of your head. So as you are taking classes, as you are building uh, relationships with your professors, with your advisors, you could kind of think about like, oh, you know what, this, this professor really knows my work. Um, let me keep in contact with them because I might want to ask them to do the letter recommendation for me. Okay, so again, maintaining that 2.67 cumulative GPA is important um, in addition to early field experience. So early field experience, what I want you to keep in mind, it's not so much, um, uh, the, the most important thing with the early field experience is the age group. So if you're gonna teach elementary school students, we wanna see the early field experience with the elementary age range, right? Same thing for high school or middle school. If, you're, if you wanna uh, teach at the middle or high school level, we want that early field experience to be with that, with that age group. And these are just examples, they're not limited to this, but these are just examples of how you could get early field experience. So being a teacher's aide, you know, being a camp counselor, being a coach, a, an athletic coach, um, a volunteer with Boys and Girl Scouts, uh, church programs, what have you. So again, these are just all examples. It's not limited to this, but just, again, I want you to kind of be aware of opportunities for you. Um, and it could be paid work. It doesn't have to be volunteer work. So if you are currently working at an after school program beyond the bow, um, LA Conservation Corps, whatever it might be, um, if you get paid, that's fine. It doesn't have to be a volunteer um, experience. Um, other important things to think about now as transfer students is um, think about the grades that you're getting. So basic skills. Uh, before basic skills was, you know, the, the surefire way to, to complete it was to take the C-Best. The C-Best is still around. That didn't go anywhere. It's still around. However, last summer, California, California passed a law, uh, AB 130, that now there's additional measures, there's additional ways that you could meet basic skills. So one of the ways, and it's probably the most easy way, is to earn a B or better in these following courses. So if you earn a B or better in English, which is your A2 requirement, critical thinking, which is your A3 requirement, or math, which is your B4 requirement, a B or better, then you met basic skills. So some of you might be taking these courses already, or maybe you didn't take these courses yet. Keep that in mind, because again, if you get a B or better in these courses, you met basic skills already, okay? Um, and it, you have to take these courses to transfer to a CSU. Whatever CSU you go to, these are part of the golden core requirements. So you have to take these one way or another. So just ensure that you get a B or better in any of these. There's other courses too that you could take, like, you know, there, there's a whole list of courses, but again, these are classes that I know for sure you're going to have to take. 
Other ways that, uh, let's say you already took these courses and maybe you got a C in them. Um, other ways that you could uh, meet basic skills is, is uh, getting a certain score on the SAT or ACT or EAP, uh, ELNPT. Some of these tests don't exist anymore, but you know, I didn't wanna um, discriminate. You know, we might have older students in the, in the room today who maybe took an ELM, EPT 10 years ago, um, whatever it might be. So, so those options are still there. AP, uh, English AP exams, math AP exams as well. If you pass those, those will also count um, for the basic skills. But if you didn't meet the basic skills by any of these, again, the CBEST is still available for you to do. It's still there, it didn't go away. In addition, um, subject matter. So same thing. Um, before it used to be the C set, right? If you didn't, if you didn't do a subject matter program at the university, um, then you have to take the C set. Uh, but with this new law, AB 130, there's additional ways to be, meet subject matter. So again, the most surefire way is to take um, to do a subject matter program at a university, like the ones that I mentioned, right? do um, uh, the ITEP program, do uh, uh, art program, uh, subject matter program, whatever it might be. If you didn't do the subject matter program, there might still be a way for you to avoid taking the CSET um, by basically just majoring in that, in that um, specific major. The only thing is it has to be a direct match with the CTC. So for instance, um, if you wanna teach social studies, there's no such major as social studies and the university is called history. So if you major in history and you want to do social studies, that's not a direct one-to-one -one match, right? So that's where you, so, so you just want to be wary of that. So, um, so that's why I say it's really important to see if that university that you go to has a subject matter program. Um, but if you want to teach art and you major in art and you didn't do the subject matter program, then that's going to, that, that will be okay. But Again, I, I best rule of thumb, do the subject matter program if the university you attend has that option for the subject matter program. Um, if you didn't do the subject matter program, again, you can still take the CSET. Oh, and it, it could also be a combination. So maybe there's certain courses that you took in a combination with the CSET. So it could be a combination of the two as well. Um, so just briefly, I want to go over, again, I mentioned in the beginning, you know, if you get a master's degree that can help uh, give you a, a pay raise, a, a pay bump. Um, so these are the different options that we have. And again, I won't go into detail about it right now because we, we are a few, a, a few couple of years from this, but just so you can have it in the back of your head, if you are teaching in elementary education, we have three great options for you. Um, curriculum instruction option, language and literacy option, and multicultural multilingual option. So again, you get an MA elementary education and then you can focus in any of these concentrations. The um, MA and secondary education, we have six options for you. Um, and then with the MA and special education, uh, you have a special education, education therapy option. Um, and then this is just a breakdown of our tuition and fees. And basically what I just want to show you is that the difference between the credential and undergraduate, it's not that, it's not that different. It's, it's about $400 more. And, and remember, at CSU, we don't charge you per unit. We charge you if you're part-time or full-time. So if you take two classes or less, which is six units or less, you're gonna pay this much. Anything above those two classes, six units, you're gonna pay this much. So if you're gonna take three courses, if you can take four, because if you take four, it's gonna be the same amount, okay? And then uh, just wanted to let you know that as credentialed students, you are still eligible for financial aid. So you wanna ensure that you submit the FAFSA by, um, by the deadline. Um, if you do decide to do a credential program, you're still, credential students are eligible for the Pell Grant, the State University Grant. There's also the TEACH Grant, um, but you're not eligible for the TEACH Grant unless you apply for the FAFSA. So you wanna make sure that you apply for these. Um, as teachers, you know, as, as future teachers, you are eligible um, possibly for a, a teacher loan forgiveness program. So if you did take out loans, they might forgive some of those loans. Um, and then finally, we have many scholarships in the College of Education. The thing about our scholarships, however, is that you have to be enrolled in the credential program. You can't apply for these scholarships beforehand, and then we save the money for you when you get here. Um, you have to be enrolled in the credential program to be eligible for these scholarships. Um, and I think that does it for me. Um, this is my email address. 
Um, if you have questions, you can ask me in the chat and I'll, and I'll answer them. But this is my email address. Please reach out to me um, whenever you have any questions. I know Jonathan and I, we, we always say like, we're here for you. Uh, we want to help you now with these questions, with the, with the issues that you have, because the, the more questions you have now and, and, and confusion that's out of the way, the more successful you be once you get to CSUN. So we wanna really ensure that you're clear and that you understand what the expectations, what the requirements are. Um, visit us on our website. You could also follow us. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, but if you follow us, you'll, you'll just be, um, you, you'll be in the know with all the other updates. Um, so that does it for me. Um, Jonathan, I'll, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you for Thank that. You. Thank you, Jacqueline. Can everybody see my screen? Okay, great. All right, so let me start. All right, can, you, can everybody see okay? Yes. All right, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jonathan Martinez. Um, and like, like Jacqueline mentioned, uh, we're here as a resource, as a guide uh, to put you in the right path, uh, especially if you want to teach elementary school K through six, like Dr. Allen mentioned earlier, uh, we want to make sure that you know you start you know at, at, at the right path. And, and again, we're here to help you. You know, you know, meet your end goal. My office number is there 818-677-7972. If you want to, you know, we can chat over the phone. Uh, we can meet via Zoom. You know, if needed. So just you know. I'm here, you know, to provide you guys with anything you guys need. So right now, to become a teacher, it's in high demand for multiple reasons. Retirement, early retirement, you know, people are, you know, are leaving, you know, California to other states. So right now is actually the perfect time to go into teaching. So that's great for everybody here today. So if you see the graph, LA County, uh, LA County alone has a huge need for teachers. To give you an idea how many teachers come out of CSUN, about 20% of the workforce that are teachers, K through six, are all CSUN alumni. And that could be from liberal studies, or it could be what you know Jacqueline was mentioning you know, earlier, uh, a combination of both. So you know, a bulk you know, of, of, the, of the teacher force in California are CSUN alumni. And just so you know, uh, CSUN's uh, Liberal Studies ITA program is actually the first in the state of California. It's highly recognized at a, at a regional and national level. So if you're in the fence of you know, where should I go, where should I apply, CSUN is definitely one, you know, one of the uh, you know, flagship you know, programs in the state of California. And it just gives you an idea of the shortage that we're currently facing right now. So again, if you're in the fence, if you're considering, you're thinking about, Definitely CSUN is definitely, you know, should be your number one choice when it comes, you know, when it comes to becoming a teacher. So you probably ask yourself, so how do I become a teacher? Especially if you want to teach elementary school, you want to get your bachelor's degree. You also complete a multiple study credential. Or if you want to teach special education, you want to complete a education specialist uh, credential. At CSUN, we have two pathways uh, when it comes to uh, uh, teachers. One, uh, the ITIP junior option, that would be for most everybody here. If you want to graduate with your bachelor's and teaching credentials, that will be the ITIP junior option. So what does that mean? You're saving time and money. And I know that's crucial for everybody here today. You want to do it as soon as possible. So that will be the ITIP junior option. If you're coming to CSUN this coming fall, sem uh, this coming fall semester, if you apply to CSUN and accepted for liberal studies, uh, there will be a little orientation, uh, which we're gonna go into in, in today's information into more detail, but just to give you an idea, if you wanna you know, finish the quickest way possible with your bachelor's and credentials, and the best thing about that too, is that you're paying undergraduate fees. So you're paying the same, like Jacqueline mentioned earlier, whether you take 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 units, you're paying the same amount. But think about it, besides paying the same amount, you're walking away with your teaching credential. The bottom portion is I to freshman. That's for folks that are graduating out of high school. So if you have any friends, any relatives that 
want to become elementary school teachers, they can finish their bachelor in credentials in four years. Uh, one thing that I definitely want to mention that Dr. Allen mentioned a little earlier, um, liberal studies is often known as, you know, as elementary education at the community college. And like she mentioned earlier, and I can't stress it enough, if you want to work, you know, with, you know, in a preschool setting, then child development, early childhood will be, you know, your best, you know, your best option, your major, right? If you want to teach elementary school, K through six, then liberal studies will be the best option for you. And one thing that sets us apart from other majors, we don't follow uh, GEs. We don't follow traditional GE, uh, GE patterns. Why? Because you're, you're doing teacher preparation courses at the community college for the first two years, you transfer to CSUN and you get your bachelor's and hopefully you're thinking about doing both your bachelor's and credentials. I have a little graph just to kind of give you an idea, give a little sense. Um, some people decide to do their bachelor's only. Um, and that's definitely great because like, you know, Jack, Jacqueline mentioned earlier, there's a lot of options for you. Uh, once you have your bachelor, as far as, well, how do I go do my credential to the district? Do you want to become an intern? Do I want to do a traditional path, you know, here at, C at CSUN? Do I want, want to do the fast pace and be done in one year? So that would be one path. But if you look at the yellow, uh, yellow square with the ITIP junior, if you're currently a liberal studies major at the community college, if you're, you know, if you're, or, or you're, again, if you're following um, elementary education, you're doing years one and two at the community college, right? Doing that as much as possible. You come to CSUN, we take care of you here, in, you know, for you to do your bachelor's and credentials together at the same time. Keep in mind the GPA, the 2.67 that Jacqueline mentioned earlier, that applies to us at, at, at liberal studies as well too. So just kind of keep that in mind as well. Assist.org is a great tool because you're probably asking, I'm not sure what path am I doing right now? And that's totally okay. That's why we're here to help you with that, right? So assist.org. So you put in LA Mission, you put in uh, Cal State Northridge, and you pick the major, you, you, you find the liberal studies. You can kind of find, kind of do an, an idea of how much you have done so far at the community college and how many more classes you need. So I want to encourage all of you guys today to use assist.org. I'm sure most of you guys have used it already or, or heard about it, but it's a great tool because it gives you accurate information. Because a lot of times, you know, we hear students, oh, you know, I wish I would have known about this before. I wish my advisor would have told me about, you know, X, Y, and Z major. So assist.org is a great tool because they, it gives you exactly what you need to take at the community college that counts at the Cal State, you know, you, you know, UCs and so forth. So it's a definitely a great tool. Again, liberal studies, uh, a lot of times it's a foreign name, you know, it's like, well, what do you mean? So a lot of times, you know, it's often, you know, the other name for liberal studies at the community college is also known as elementary education, just you know, kind of, kind of keep that in mind. But I definitely want to encourage all of you guys to meet with your counselor at the community college and kind of see where you're at and see what, you know, which path you know, is best for you. One of the advantages, I know Jacqueline mentioned this earlier about liberal studies, is that you can meet two things. You can meet subject matter by simply having a, a liberal studies degree. So you graduate with a liberal studies degree, you're meeting, you're meeting ESM. So you're meeting the CSA requirement, it's checked off, done. Basic skills, I know Jacqueline mentioned earlier that, it, you know, depending on the major, it could be met, guess what, liberal studies, it's already embedded. So you do liberal studies, you can also meet basic skills, so you don't, you don't have to take this, the CBIS exam as well. As you can see, there's great benefits doing our bachelor's credentials together and also, you know, meeting, you know, ESM and also meeting basic skills. So you have already three things, you know, in your favor, especially if you're beginning right now or if you're like debating, you know, which major is best for you. As you can see, there's three things already that's for your advantage uh, if you want to become an elementary school teacher. So I definitely want to encourage you guys, talk to your counselor or talk to your faculty member and kind of find out where you are and see what, you know, what's what's best for you. Also, the TEACH grant. I know Jacqueline mentioned this earlier. We do have a TEACH grant, especially for students that are doing a, a, a blended program. Because you know, you know, if we get the money for the TEACH grant, you have to be part of ITEP. Or, 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 or like what Jacqueline mentioned earlier, if you're doing something, you know, in, 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 their, in their office too, we can also qualify and apply for it too. But I know with liberal studies, if you do, uh, if you do join the ITEP program, you can, you know, you can apply and qualify for the TEACH grant. It's up to $4,000. So keep that in mind. So there's ways to fund your education here at CSUN. I'm not sure if you knew, but CSUN is one of the top three institutions in California in preparing K through six educators. So we'll definitely take great pride in that. 
also, we want you to you know be a well-rounded individual and and gain leader in leadership roles. So we have a we do have a liberal studies student association at CSUN. Um, you know, maybe some of you guys want to become maybe the you know maybe the president, vice president, but not only that, but also network and meet other people with you know common interests. So I definitely want to encourage you guys if you want to you know if you're coming to see this fall semester, you know, write down their email address, send them an email, and just say, hey, I'm coming to CSUN. I'm interested. I want to get more involved. That's our, some of our events that we had on campus. Um, and, that, and that's, and that's this, this one thing I definitely want to highlight, but we're an alumni getting Teacher of the Year 2018. If you go to YouTube, we have so many runner-ups uh, because the quality of our, uh, of, our, of, of our program, our faculty, uh, it's very hands-on. And I'm showing this picture because this could be you in the next couple of years. Um, you could be awarded for the great work because I'm sure some of you are doing great work already. So many guys might be in the classroom already, you know, make, having that you know great impact in the classroom. So this could be you uh, once you are done, you know, with, uh, with your program. And that's it for me. My email is there. Like I said, we can you know chat. You know, we can talk over the phone if you want to email. If you have any questions, but I know we're gonna be here for a couple minutes to answer any questions that you that you may have. And that's it for me. Thank you so much, Jonathan, and um, also Jacqueline. This is really important information for any student that's at a community college. We did start focusing on the pathway from Mission College because that's where I teach and advise students. But any of you at any of the community colleges in California, um, in our Southern California region that are um, majoring in a transfer deg degree that is a teacher pathway, can use this information to um, make your next plan and your next steps. And some questions that, um, that have always come up in terms of opportunity are um, related to the information that you both shared. And so I just want to emphasize because there was a question at some point, you know, um, it, whether this uh, presentation was about a community college or a university. And so if you're a transfer student, then you might consider what have been called blended programs or um, accelerated programs or what Jonathan just spoke about as the ITEP Junior, which is um, short for integrated, um, right? Integrated teacher education program, which means you've done some years at a community college and then you transfer in. And you know, once you're there as a, an admitted student, can apply to um, be part of the blended program where you are earning your um, bachelor's or undergraduate degree and your credential at the same time. There's pros and cons to every option and it's not one size fits all. It's based on what's going on in your life context as a student. Are you a parent? Are, do you have you know, a job that's not flexible? Um, your timeline for completion, all of that are things to consider but there are multiple options. Um, I just want to add uh, to that. Um, this was a lot of information uh, in a short amount of time. So it's okay if you're not sure what to ask. Um, but I just want to mention that these are the programs at CSUN. And sometimes there's a misconception like all CSUs are the same, like they all run the same. And we don't. We're sister campuses, but just like we might have siblings, we might be related, but we're nothing alike, right? So it's just maybe CSUN's not the school for you. Um, maybe, you know, um, maybe you, Cal State LA, maybe you're close to Cal State LA, maybe you're close to Long Beach, wherever you are. Um, don't assume that their programs are like ours too. They might have um, other um, integrated programs. Like at CSUN, we have English, math, and history, but maybe at another campus, maybe they have English, uh, math, and science, who knows, right? Maybe a, a maybe like Spanish or like a foreign language. So um, just don't assume that all the other campuses are alike. Don't, you know, Jonathan's program, he's in the College of Humanities. Um, there might be a program similar to Jonathan's, but in the College of Education. So just, it's just really important, it, whatever schools you're thinking about transferring to, to really look at the programs like Dr. Allen was saying, you know, choose the right program that's right for you. Um, and then just don't assume that all the programs are exactly alike. Mm -hmm. 
That's a great point. I taught at Cal State Dominguez Hills for 10 years. It's a CSU um, and uh, not for education. It was actually a, a different college, but you're right. The credentialing programs and liberal studies were under the College of Education and CSUN is under a different college. And so, and that's okay. It just means the structure is different and find out information, compare and contrast. Jonathan was gonna share something and then I'll read out a question that's in the chat box. I was gonna answer the question, Dr. Oh, Allen. There's a question yeah. about me. Um, the question is, if you satisfy all the IT requirements and eligible does that guarantee admissions out, uh, we don't, um, so the way the process works, let's say you've been admitted to CSUN, so you apply to CSUN, you've been admitted, once you're admitted, We'll have a little orientation here in liberal studies. And once you've been admitted, then you have to apply to the credential program. And that's what Jacqueline mentioned earlier about the process about the you know, letters of recommendation, uh, basic skills. She said you apply for that and then you get admitted to ITEP. So think about ITEP and credential as, as something that you want to you want to do. I will say probably in your in your after finish your first year at CSUN. So there's no there's no uh, guaranteed admission. You still have to apply, meet the GPA, do the background check. You know, all that good stuff. So you want to make sure you do that, you know, after your first year at CSUN. Thank you for that. Um, there is something that was sent. Um, there's an attendee that already has a, B, a BS, a Bachelor in Science. Um, does CSUN have a master's and credential program? They're interested in becoming a resource specialist. Um, or, or is there a master's program in special education? Uh, mild to moderate. So someone with a degree already? That'd be for Jacqueline. Yeah, so um, good question. So at CSUN, our credential programs are not better with master programs. So you have to get the credential and then you apply for the master's. However, for the special education, um, there is a master, we have a master's special education. And what happened, this is like way down the line. So um, when you get your credential, you have to clear it. You have to do an induction program after you get your credential, right? So with special education, what's, what's really great is that um, if, you, if you decide to do the induction program at CSUN, some of those courses could be part of your master's degree program. So you do the induction, like the induction program you have to do to clear your credential, like you have to do it, but you could do it anywhere. I believe you could even do it with the district. Is that right? Can't you do an induction program within a district? Jonathan. Yeah, and, and let's clarify for some people what an induction program is. If those of you that were in the previous um, workshop and Miss Amy Scallon said that she did BITSA with LAUSD and it's when she became a new teacher, there was a certain amount of time she had to do a certain kinds of professional development, ongoing training for a certain amount of time. And then she got that, that approval of completion. So induction is a new teacher completing some form of like professional academic development on top of their credential early when they start as a teacher. And that can either be through coursework through university um, or it can be a district specific program that you complete after you're teaching with the district that you're teaching. So that's what Ms. Jacqueline's talking about when she um, refers to induction. Yeah, so so uh, thank you for explaining that. So um, so with special education, you could do the induction at CSUN, but those classes are, if you decide to do the master's at CSUN, those classes could count for your master's degree program. So some students are like, well, if I'm already doing these classes, might as well just add a few more and then I get the master's degree too. Thank Any you other so questions, much. you can put them in the chat if you like, or if you want to just, you know, raise your hand. Again, we're here to help and, you know, and help you with any questions that you might have. See, it looks like there's something here. Also, that's not all. Yeah, that's right. There's a comment, which is really important. And I know that um, um, and Mr. Jonathan and Ms. Jacqueline also um, see this. In LACCD, not all classes um, have the exact same catalog um, requirements. For example, there might be class A in this department at college A in within a district like LACCD at Mission. We might have a class that maybe has zero prerequisites and maybe the same class at a sister campus may have a prerequisite or even an education class that has no prerequisites at one campus 
the observation hours might be embedded in that course, whereas in a sister campus, the same number class um, in that discipline might not have the requirement in hours. So it's important if you have options where you're a student of a district and you can go to different campuses that you're meeting with a counselor, that you're meeting with an advisor, that you've declared your major and you check in a minimum of once a semester. At Mission, we have a workforce development or a career education counselor that's there two times a week. And check with your campus if there's a designated counselor that might be more available or familiar with your program. Um, as Jacqueline mentioned, see a counselor often to plan in advance. To add to that, yeah, see a counselor every semester before you register for courses, preferably. Um, but also keep in mind things change, um, requirements change. Um, so it's really, you know, you have to just kind of be on that as tedious it might sound like, well, I have to check every semester, you know, but but you don't, you know, I, I, I hate that I used to see like messed me up. I have talked to students before, I used to work in early in, in, in outreach. And I would talk to students and they say, I took these courses, but then they ended up not counting. I didn't know. And um, it breaks my heart because that's time and money that, that you took. Um, so really, you know, talk to the counselors, your advisors uh, before you register for your courses. So you're ensuring that you're taking the right courses. And sometimes you might even doubt, like, wait, is this what the counselor is telling me? If it makes sense, like, is, is that really true? Um, at CSUN, we have a whole outreach team that talks to transfer students. So if you just want to ensure, like double check that what you're taking is going to transfer over as a transfer student, well, then so talk to give the Oh, if you, it's okay. if you just um, so uh, talk to the university to that you're planning to transfer to ensure that, you know, and work with your transfer centers too. So sure you might have your advisor within the major that you're that you're in. But it's also really important to check in with the transfer center at your community college as well, because the transfer centers, that's where college recruiters go. That's where they go to do appointments, to talk to students individually, to do um, sessions. So also um, just, you know, know where your transfer center is at your community college and visit your transfer center, you know, maybe once a semester just to ensure that you have everything in line too. That is amazing feedback. Um, I, I hope that you found it useful. Jonathan, I see your hand is up. Um, actually, Dr. Allen, what I was gonna say, it was covered by you, by Jasmine already, but <laughs> I can't stress enough, assist.org, great tool. It has all the classes needed at CSA or the Cal State, so please use that tool. But you know what Jacqueline mentioned, seeing advisor on a regular basis and also a busy transfer center because we do have reps from season that go to the, our local community colleges to meet with you. So there's people to help you, guide you along the way. So please, you don't have to do this alone. And I'm sorry for, you know, for the person that mentioned earlier that it kind of messed up your, 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 your path, but you know, I'm sure you get a lot of information about that class. So always, there's always look, at, look at the silver lining you know, about taking that class. I, I know it's time, I know I understand, but it's trying to find the positive. You know, again, we're all gonna be future educators here. So there's always, we try to find a positive angle of everything in life because we're all here as future teachers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I always learn every time I get to partner with Mr. Jonathan and Ms. Jacqueline, I learn something new. I'm like, oh, that's an update. That's an update. And it helps me try to connect our students at community colleges, whether it's at Mission or in our LACCD or Southern California to CSUN. It is a gold standard university. And um, I hope that you consider um, applying and moving forward with your career at Cal State Northridge. Here's some contact information. I will also include this in the email if you gave me your name and your email in the chat box. And, um, you know, this is just visually for you to see my contact information, ellenvivialimission.edu with some of our um, campus links, our teach um, a teach website and a video we had of uh, the first ever and only because of the pandemic teacher symposium that we had on campus. And both Jacqueline and Jonathan were at that when we had that a few years ago. But thank you so much for um, coming. Thank you so much to CSUN and our partners at CSUN. Have a great rest of the day. And tomorrow is the next day of this Teach for Alley virtual conference series. Thank you.
Thank you for having us again, Dr. Allen. Thank you. Have a good everybody. week, everybody. Take care. Have a good afternoon. Take care. Bye. Thank Bye. you.